Hi boys and girls, moms and dads. My name is Brian Cusco and I'm going to be showing you some lizards today. Again, I'm Brian Cusco. I'm here with Roaming Reptiles. And just before we get started, I wanted to let you know this video was made in partnership with the County of San Luis Obispo Public Library and for the foundation of the San Luis Obispo Public Library. Now the little guy I've got here in my hands right now is a special, special lizard. Special because he's the first animal I'm showing you here that I don't actually keep in captivity. I actually went and found this guy out in the front yard. So those of you here in Slow County and these guys are actually native to a wide range of California as well as even up in Oregon and some other places. But this is a, a western fence lizard and they're also known as blue bellies commonly because of the little, whoa, don't lose him in the room. <laughs> because that beautiful blue colored belly that they have. You know, notice there's also some yellow markings down by the legs, which are also common, but you can really see that, that blue belly on the sides that's kind of shining through there. And that's where these guys get their common name. Now, Western fence list is also a common name, but, but blue, belly, blue belly is kind of a pet name that I think these guys get. I've caught blue bellies and western fence lizards, whatever you want to call them, most of my life. And I've caught literally hundreds of them at this point. But for whatever reason, when it was time for me to go and find one for a video, when I had a specific purpose for finding one other than just for fun to catch one and hold it and to actually film it and make a video with this guy, I, it took me literally two days to catch one of these things, which is unheard of. I've never had such a hard time catching a, a blue belly lizard in my entire life. And not only did I have a hard time just catching one and finding one in the process there's a log down at the bottom of our driveway and I lifted it up and it had been turned into a uh, wasp nest so I got stung right on the end of my wrist and then wasps chased me I was running up my driveway and, and they were chasing me around the car so it was quite adventured to find this little uh, little lizard for you guys which he is little these guys will actually get you know, I would consider him a juvenile he can easily reach two maybe even three times on the larger end of, of this size right here and woo and I don't want to and he's a little squirmy so I'm trying to be gentle with him and I also want to make sure that I don't grab him by his tail because as you may have learned in previous videos which if you haven't watched all the other videos we've put out for the library yet I highly recommend you go back to the beginning and start at the beginning and watch each one because we talk about different details about cold-blooded creatures along the way and I can tell on this guy's tail, which you can see is shedding a little bit here. Um, this part of his tail looks much different than the rest of his tail, and that's because this guy, even at his juvenile age, has already lost his tail, which is a defense mechanism we've talked about with other lizards before. These guys definitely have that mechanism where they're able to j just drop their tail on command, and it'll stay there and wriggle and for a predator to, to go and take his attention to the tail instead of to the lizard itself that will then escape with its life. But unlike the last lizard I showed that, that will do that with his tail, which was a crested gecko, this guy is able to re fully regenerate his tail, which he has done here. Now, blue bellies eat mostly insects and spiders, but they do also sometimes eat other smaller lizards, which is definitely a thing. But they're definitely an important part of our environment here locally. And one thing I learned recently about these guys, uh, actually I just learned this yesterday, is that they have some kind of protein or some kind of chemical in their blood that when a, a tick is on them and many of you may know if you're not aware ticks can carry Lyme disease is something they pick up from the deer they can they can have Lyme disease and it's, if you get bit by a tick and you get Lyme disease it's not fun getting tick by, its, by itself is not fun but getting Lyme disease from a tick is definitely not fun but when a tick latches onto one of these guys th they have something in their blood that actually counteracts the Lyme disease proteins and and basically kills the Lyme disease in the tick. So if you're in an area where there are lots of blue bellies, which luckily we are, chances are a lot of the ticks there might not be carrying Lyme disease thanks to these little guys right here. And it's a fairly recent study, but it's also pretty cool. I thought that was really awesome that these guys are able to provide us that service uh, just by, I, I don't know exactly the science behind how it works, but I just think it's cool that it does. Um, He's starting to open his mouth a little bit here. You might want to bite me. These guys are usually pretty easy to handle. And they are often much different, differently colored than this sometimes. Like he's, This guy is very light for a western fence lizard. They 
can even change their color and uh, turn very dark when they're trying to absorb more light, which is, of course, how they maintain their body temperature by basking out in the sun. But look at his long toes. This guy, can you see how long those toes are on his back foot? Those are extremely long toes on his feet, and those help him run very quickly. This guy is a speed master, which is why uh, I guess it was so hard for me to catch him. <laughs> but, yep, blue belly western fence lizards, as they're known. And this other beautiful beast of a lizard here is Roxanne. You may have met Roxanne before if you've been attending the Slow Library shows because my buddy Brandon, who is the man who has been doing rep Romeo Reptile shows for the past 10 years before I took it over from him here in California, was, uh, was bringing Roxanne around as well. So you may or may not have met her if you went to a show. But there she is. This is Roxanne. She's a big, beautiful lizard, and she is a red tegu. The red tegus are from South America, uh, more specifically, I'd say the, the western side of Argentina is where you, these are most likely commonly found down there in South America. And one of the cool things about Roxanne that's different from most of the other animals that I've shown you in this entire video series is that she is very much an omnivore. Now, what omnivore means is that she eats both plants and animals. So a lot of the other animals I've been showing you have been either carnivores or herbivores or vegetarians. And... She's one of the few animals here that eats just about everything. We feed her bananas, blueberries, uh, mice, rats. She will eat just about anything. It's kind of cool. And she's more of a terrestrial lizard, whereas that western fence lizard would definitely climb up some trees to get away from stuff. Um, I'm not going to say that Roxanne couldn't climb a tree, but she likely wouldn't, and even if she did try, it'd probably be very awkward for her. These are a much more terrestrial lizard, which terrestrial means they spend most of their time on the ground and digging burrows. And it's interesting, she has a fairly large face here, but and so there was times when I was questioning if she was actually a she, because the males will get these huge giant face cheeks, which she kind of has a little bit, but... She came here as a female, so we refer to her as a female, and those those face, those big chubby cheeks on the side here, they're not as big as some males can definitely get, so we're just going to call her Roxanne, the female red tegu. Now Roxanne is full grown here, she's probably around 8 to 10 years old, and weighing around 15 pounds or so. I'm going to let her crawl by here, and you'll see she's a much slower moving lizard than that blue belly lizard was. That blue belly lizard would have been gone 20 times already. Roxanne's much more slow moving and uh, they are diurnal, which means that they're out during the day and she really likes to go bask in the sunlight and, and take little sun baths. So we bring her outside on these nice warm days and let her chill out in the sun. And These are very docile lizards, so they're fairly popular in the pet trade because when they're babies, they're actually much smaller. They're maybe like this big, and they're very active, and they, they run around. But once they get older like this, they slow down. And if, especially if you take some time working with them, they become very friendly and very easy to easy to handle lizards. And very cool to see that big tongue flicking out there. It's just like a snake tongue, the big forked tongue going out there and um, smelling the air. And you can see how this is kind of an example of how she is terrestrial. She's not really comfortable up in there, here in the air. She really wants to be on the ground, with her belly on the ground, crawling around. Makes her a lot more comfortable. One of Roxanne's best defenses, aside from a mouthful of teeth, first thing she'll likely use before the teeth is this big, giant, strong tail. If she's feeling threatened, these guys will often whip with their tail. And if you get hit with that tail, it's pretty powerful. It's a, it's a strong whip, and it's not something you wanna you wanna have happen. I hope you guys have been enjoying these videos so far. We've got a few more of them in this series to go for with you. And I uh, would like to <laughs> encourage you that if you haven't already, sit down and have a chat with a friend or your parents and talk about something that you learned today in this video. Because I find that if you talk about it afterwards, it really helps it stay in your brain so that you can actually have gained something and, and learn something new and kept it up there. It really helps. I highly encourage you to do that. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, we'll be back with another video shortly. You guys have a great day.